friendly concern. Oh, showing friendly concern's one thing. Coming over all butch is another. I don't see it's any of your business. Of course it's my business. You find her attractive, don't you? Well, everyone does. You do. Look, you don't own me. You're not my mother. If you don't like it, you can shove off. Right. <laughs> Julie, Swy Cafe, pour favor. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Bidley? <laughs> or now the sauna solarium is semi-independent, perhaps I should say, what can I semi-do for you? I only came in to tell you about Carol and the fact I know what you're going to say, Mrs. Bidmead. She keeps her children in the drawers and cupboards of reception. It's not something I'm proud of. No, it's not that, Mr. Britters. It's the fact that she's horribly upset every time something reminds her of that nasty experience with Herr Von Trapp. Like any good manager, Mrs. Bidmead, I was aware of the situation. We at Whitbury have a special saying. Cow pet. Cow. It's a management tool. A cow pet is. Consider what practical action to take. Cow pet. Now, the practical action to take in this situation is to let everyone know. Watch this. <clears throat> Hello? Carol? Yes, sir. What I want you to do, Carol, is put your fingers in your ears and don't take them out until I tell you to, all right? Yes, Miss Briss. Part two. <clears throat> This is a staff announcement. Would all members of staff please take note that Carol, our receptionist, is likely to burst into tears every time someone mentions her seduction and abandonment. Carol! Certain Carol, Carol. Oh, give me some cigarettes. Cigarettes? Oh, what about the confiscation of all? Music, the gold tracks, aim vice, whiskers <laughs> on kittens, <laughs> and don't forget the female chicken. There you are, Mrs Bidmead. Cowpat. In action. Now, let's talk about you. Let's bond. First of all, if you bond, then I'll bond, then we'll bond together. <laughs> smoke alarm. Yeah, it's that one. And I can smell smoke. Attention, staff and public. Oh, perhaps it was only a cigarette, Mr. Bridges. Better safe than sorry, Mrs. Bidmead. Evacuate, evacuate the building. I repeat, evacuate, evacuate the building. He's back, then he's having a fire drill. safe than sorry and I like a good fire drill. Well that's just the start. Next it'll be flood drill, whooping cough alert, invasion by penguins. And he sat on your model. He probably had a very good reason, Julie. Mr. Britness knows what he's doing. He didn't seem to notice I was pregnant. Are you looking for something? Coke. Cola or Pepsi? The hard stuff. Drugs? No, you know, anthracite. Oh, you mean smokeless fuel. There you are. Oh, 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 yeah. I just keep yearning for it. I love to see a girl with a healthy appetite. <laughs> He's a lucky man, that fiancé of yours. All that money and you too. I chucked him. Why did... <laughs> he didn't insult you, did he? Because if he did, by God, I... He insulted me, all right. He wanted me to learn to speak proper. Elocution lessons, me. I elocute very nicely, don't I? You speak beautifully, Julie. I've always thought that. I watch your lips. I love your lips. They're so dark and mysterious. <laughs> My milkman's took me too. She cut me out of her round. Well, we're two little waves together then. Except I'm pregnant. Julie, I've always admired you. The way you've always helped Mr. Britters in his great leisure crusade, and I was wondering if, now that my spot's dropped off, you would consider me. What as? Marry me, Julie. Why? You're the father for your child, and I don't mind that it's not mine. You know those plant pots where the seed's already sown? I live with those very happily. <laughs> I may not be much, Julie, but I've got a good heart. That's very nice of you, Colin. I can just see us now in the evenings together. You bathing the baby in front of the fire, me playing my swanny whistle. <laughs> sense, Julie. And I'm not just on the rebound from the milkman. 
I'll think about it. Well, that's fair enough. But before you say yes, I think there's something you ought to know about me. What? Well, you remember when I lost my memory, when Mr Britters was packing to go to Brussels before he died? Well, when I got my memory back, I remembered what I'd done. A terrible thing. I put a bomb in Mr Britters's croquet set, luggage in advance. A bomb? It was silly of me, I know, and very irresponsible. Oh, well, it can't have gone off. It'd have been in the papers. What you have to consider is, Julie, could you marry a man who tried to assassinate Mr Britters? <laughs> It helps. <laughs> they don't know much about leisure, the Swiss. But I soon got them organised. Seven aside football, orthopaedic surgeons against plastic. Yeah, fascinating, <laughs> Gordon. But I didn't just come here to say welcome back on behalf of the council. Uh, the fact is, what with your being away, we've had a couple of problems. Problems? You say problems, councillor. I say cow pet. <laughs> We had a little collection around the offices for a memorial for you for your accident. People were amazingly generous. We raised £512. But, of course, now you're with us again, and the fact is people want their money back. A memorial to my accident? That is unusual, Jack. Very nice of people. Yeah, the thing is, the money. It's in cash, most of it, in an envelope, and it should be in your post. Julie, are you there? Where's the post, please? I'm busy! <laughs> and then there's the business with the insurance. Insurance? What insurance? The life insurance. They paid out. They paid out? They paid your wife £88,000. But, of course, uh, with the circumstances being what they are now, they want it back. And, unfortunately, your wife spent it all just before they came to take her away. She spent £88,000. You see that car down there? <laughs> what, next to the rolls? No, the rolls. <laughs> that was 50000 of it. The rest went on a horse. She bought a horse? <laughs> no, Gordon. She backed it. <laughs> Why did they pay out of my life insurance? Exactly. It must have been a computer error. <laughs> they thought I was dead! <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that car's got to go back. Wait a minute, Jack. That car wasn't there when I came in this morning. My wife is on the premises. Here's your coffee. Oh, by the way, the clinic phoned. Your wife's got loose without her clothes. <laughs> I'll just deal with this, Councillor. <clears throat> Attention, all staff and public. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Nothing at all. However, if you see a naked lady with staring eyes and hair all over the place carrying a key to a Rolls Royce, please inform this office immediately and be gentle with her, for this is the lady that I've worshipped for many years. Thank you. Mrs. Brittus. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Brittus, I was just talking about you to myself. What are you doing in my cupboard? I must have fallen asleep in there. When Gordon woke me up, did you hear him? He's worshipped me for many years. He told everyone. And it's true. And all that time he was being reconstructed, I've been trying to make myself cheap with some doctor. <laughs> God, I destroyed that letter. I'll let him know you're here, shall I? No, not just like this. I've got some stuff in the back of my car. I want to look my best. I want to... How does he look, Colin? Oh, he's fine. You know, he's got three dimensions again. He said he's never had so much stamina. And strong. He's got a grip like a vice. Of course, physically, we were always very good together. <laughs> Lederhosen, of course, were very appealing, though they were terribly difficult to iron. I've got some Lederhosen. Gavin says I look good in leather. Or he used to say. You're not very happy either, are you, Tim? I'm angry. It's Penny. Maybe he finds her attractive as a mother figure. She's no mother figure. You're a mother figure. Am I? Oh, thank you. If ever I was after a mother figure, I'd come to you. Well, if ever you want to cuddle, I'm always very willing. Are you? <laughs> 